our second speaker is Stephen Hegerhorst, and he comes from a family of eight children, he has six brothers and one sister, and today he'll be speaking about why so serious and the need for laughter. This is his speaking to entertain in the professional speakers program, and the time is 10 to 15 minutes. I think I tied my introduction wrong. I'm actually from a family of six sisters and one brother. What's that? What's that? No, I, I, I probably typed it wrong for you guys. <laughs> I hope this is true. So several years ago, was working for a scrapbooking company and I was their purchasing manager. This scrapbooking company was growing really fast. We we're doubling our revenue every year. And when you're growing that fast, things are crazy. As a purchasing manager, it was crazy every day. People were running in my office and say, hey Steve, you gotta get this, get in here tomorrow. Yeah, I'm working really hard on my desk. My phone was always ringing. I get this phone call, and guess who it was? Samuel L. Jackson. And I'm like, what? And I'm sitting there listening to it, and he's like, Stephen, this is Samuel L. Jackson. You need to get on your bike and ride to American Fork Cinemark Theaters and see Snakes on a Plane. And if you don't do it, I'm going to come to your house in American Fork and I'm going to bite your butt. And I just started laughing. I'm like, I knew it was a prank. I'm like, how did they do it? How did they know these specific things? To me, and as I sit there kind of chuckling, I heard some people laughing. I had some coworkers that were the biggest jokesters, so I yelled over to them, "John and Darren, how did you do that?" And they're like, "Come over and see." So I ran over there, and on both of their screens, they had these web pages that had questions that you put in about the individual, and then you put in their phone number, and it would call them. I was very ductile that day. <laughs> I didn't do any work the rest of the day. I was just going through, sending these messages to all my vendors, went and sent it to all my friends, and I started sending to my siblings, except for the ones that don't have sense of humor like I do. My sister Carla's back there, and she has a sense of humor like that, so I sent it to her and knew she'd laugh. Then I started calling people, and they were laughing. As soon as I, you know, it's say, hey, how's it going? They'd be laughing, I'm like, you sent that, didn't you? I'm like, yeah, and they'd be laughing, and say, how did you do that? And I'd tell them. And then I just started getting phone calls, some from my siblings that knew that it was me. I don't know how, but again, they know a sense of humor, so they think like I do. So that day was just a big waste. I had a blast, we had a blast. So I go home, I'm feeling pretty good. I walk through the door, and my wife, I could tell she wasn't happy. She's like, I just got a phone call from your sister, Lisa, just to protect the innocent here. And she was livid. She got one of your messages from Samuel L. Jackson, and it had all kinds of swearing in it. And I said, I did, I, the one I got didn't have any swearing in it. And she said, well, hers did. And what's worse is you sent it to your mom. <laughs> and it was on her voicemail. <laughs> it scared her so bad, she called the Utah County Sheriff's. <laughs> we live in Benjamin, so they don't have police. They have the sheriffs. And I'm like, oh, no. <sighs> so... I had to take a deep breath and own up to what I did. I called my mom. Hey, mom, let me explain. Does that work? Some guys played a prank on me. I thought it would be funny to do you. So I put this in to computer. Now, something you have to know about my family. Again, I told you there's eight of us. But there's 21 years between the oldest and the youngest. And I'm seventh to youngest. So my parents are quite a bit older than me. As my sister Carla will attest, they have never used a computer in their lives. My mom tried, but after so many attempts, we just gave up. So trying to explain to her how I did this, 
it wasn't going for what, very well. And she interrupted me. She said, Stephen, a black man called and left me a message on my phone and told me that if I didn't go see snakes on a plane, he was going to come to my house and bite my butt. <laughs> and I am just laughing, not out loud, because I, I was just holding it back. I'm like, no, Mom, that was me. I tried to explain it again. She's like, no, it was this black man. And it scared me. I called the sheriff. I'm like, well, what did the sheriff do? He came to the house. I played him a message. And he just smiled at me and said, Ma'am, that was a phone prank. That's not a real. That's not a real person. I don't think she still believed it. I just had to let it go. I did my best to explain it to her. I got off the phone and called my two siblings that have sense of humor like me, and we just laughed our guts out. Again, I don't mean to you know make fun of my mom, but she just she just didn't get it. Um. The good news was that after I'd laughed so long with my siblings and got off the phone, my wife had lightened up a bit. My dad is an avid fisherman, loves to fish. I love to fish, but not as much as my dad. We used to go fishing all the time. He'd take us to the kids, the grandkids, his son-in-laws. When I got married, I made it a goal to go at least fishing with him once a month. I'd drive out to Benjamin, and when I'd get there, he'd be just like, you know, that kid on Christmas morning, sitting in the truck, ready to go. It'd be early, because he'd like to get an early start. Have, he'd have it all packed and everything, and we'd just go. Well, this particular Saturday morning, I pulled into the driveway, and my dad was just, he was just like this, sitting up against the, the wall of the house, and he was just like this, and I'm like, oh, something's wrong. I got out of the truck, and I said, hey, Dad, what's wrong? He says, well... They had me managing two bottling crews at work, which was only normal as one bottling crew. And he says, what's worse is that they're at the two ends of the warehouse. And he said, and it was a big warehouse. He says, besides that, they added a lot of responsibilities to me. He says, they've added so many responsibilities to me. I'm surprised that they haven't asked me to stick a broom up my ass and to sweep the floor as I walk back and forth to each crew. <laughs> <laughs> I busted up laughing. He just looked at me, stern face, and said, Why are you laughing? I said, Dad, that is very funny. He's like, That's not funny. That's the truth. <laughs> My family does not talk about sex. Never talks about sex. I never had to talk about sex. <laughs> One day, meeting lunch in the kitchen, three sisters in the kitchen, my mom. My mom walks up to each of the sisters. <coughs> walks up to my second oldest sister. My second sister's like, for heaven's sakes, mother, you can say the word pregnant in front of Stephen. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that just kind of has to give you the background for this next story. I'm a sophomore in high school, English class. First 15 minutes of English class, the teacher set it aside for reading a book because we have to do book reports. Now, this teacher was Mrs. Berry, very sweet lady very young. She taught us very well. She told us if you don't understand a word when you're reading, you need to look it up and find out what it means so that you can understand what you're reading. Okay, got it? So I'm reading a book written by Essie Hitton. He wrote The Outsiders and also That Was Then, This Is Now. I was reading, that was then, this is now. As I was reading through it, I came across this word that I never heard of before. I didn't know what it meant. So my good buddy sitting next to me, I'm like, hey Gary, read this sentence and tell me what that word means. He looks at me, I don't know what it means, that's Mrs. Barry. Again, this is reading time, so it's silent. So I put my hand up like this, and Mrs. Barry is about right where Bart is right now. <clears throat> And she's like, yes, Stephen? 
I have a word, I don't know what it means. What's the word? Cleavage. <laughs> the class, of course, these are sophomores, are buzzing out laughing. What did Mrs. Berry do? Her face went bright red, and all she did was, and right there where she was pointing was a dictionary. <laughs> so Gary and I walked up there, we looked it up. I'm going to read it to you because I. <laughs> When I, as soon as I read it, I went red and started laughing too. The hollow between a woman's breast, once supported, especially as exposed by a low cut garment. And we're all just like, oh, <laughs> One of my favorite movie quotes is from The Dark Knight Why so serious? I have to ask myself that a lot. Because a lot of times I get in work and I get very serious and I take things too serious. And so I ask myself that, why so serious, Steve? And it makes me smile and laugh. We know that laughter is very healthy. It releases endorphins. It lightens the mood. And it's found to have very, a lot of medical benefits. I want to challenge each of you to ask yourself that question, why so serious? And then take the time to laugh. Laugh at yourself. Laugh at others. Because laughter is very helpful. <laughs> Thank you.